Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we have a negative one. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about products that I don't recommend for the Sephora savings event. I've already done my haul. I've already done a recommendations video, but I wanted to put together a video of things that are from the new arrivals page that I personally wouldn't recommend for you guys. Now that being said, there are a number of products here that I know a lot of people love. So don't go just by my own experiences, but I still want to share them with you and why I personally don't recommend these products. I love the Sephora Spring Savings event. You guys know that it's always a really exciting time of year for me. As a creator, it's really fun for me. As a makeup enthusiast, I love to buy so much stuff. Just a great time for a discount on, on makeup and you know products that I've just been wanting to test. But there are some stuff that I'm like weary about and there are specific brands that I don't think you should purchase from during this event. So the first thing we need to talk about brands, pay attention to which brands have what sale because there are certain brands that will have better sales than what Sephora will offer you. For example, I did not recommend a single Pat McGrath product because we know Pat McGrath has a crazy 30, 35, one time a 50% off sale. <laughs> Think of brands that go on sale. I know Urban Decay goes on sale a lot. Fenty just had their friends and family sale. Makeup Forever just had a 30% off sale. So just be mindful of that. That's why there's a certain number of brands that I just didn't recommend. But other than that, for today's products, I pulled new products from the Sephora's list that I just wasn't feeling. So let's get started with foundations. This is the new Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. It's not that it's a bad foundation. Honestly, like I like it. It does its job. It's just that I'm really disappointed that they replaced this. <laughs> the Ultra HD foundation was one of my all-time favorites. That one is so much better than this one. This one does not wear as well. It doesn't look as pretty on the skin. It still looks pretty on the skin, but it's not one of my all-time favorite foundations, and I'm just mad that they reformulated it to this because it's just simply not as good. I haven't loved a lot of the foundations that have come out. N you know, when I tried them, they were great. I loved the NARS and one of the Dior, but the rest, I've been like able to make it work, able to make myself like it. But then I wear a foundation that I really love, and I'm like, oh, these new foundations aren't very good. And this one, again, not on the top. I wasn't going to talk about this one, but also so the Kostas is not on the top. It's not bad, but it's not great. Nessa Myricks, not bad, but it's not great. So many just, they're middle of the road, you know, not really worth the money. But the next major one that I wanted to talk about was the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin. I talk about this a ton and not liking it. So if you've watched my videos, you know I don't like this. But yeah. I don't like this. It's very disappointing and I continue to make a point to talk about it because it is so pricey and I love Charlotte Tilbury, one of my all-time favorite makeup brands, but this one just wasn't cutting it for me. It looks really heavy on my skin. It sits on top of my skin. It doesn't really ever look like my skin at all. It looks very heavy and it also just like wears terribly. <laughs> There's not really a saving grace for this. I, my face has to be completely unpowdered for this to work for me and in Florida that's just not going to work. So yeah, this is still one of the most popular foundations. A lot of people really love it. So just take my experience with a grain of salt, I do have more dry skin, so keep that in mind as well. But yeah, no, Charlotte Tilbury's foundations in general aren't that great so yeah <laughs> for me at least and then the last foundation that i wanted to talk about oh i wanted to like this one so bad it had potential but the one size turn up the base beauty blur balm cream did not end up working out for me i was really on the fence i had to wear this a number of times because the first time that i wore it it looked kind of bad up close but then i looked like took a step back and I was like, oh, it looks really great though. It looks light, my skin looks really blurred, it looks really even. But honestly, that's the reoccurring trend with this. I find it looks pretty good as I wear throughout the day. When I look in the mirror, I'm like, wow, you know, my skin looks really nice and natural. And then I get really close and I can see it swimming into all of my dry patches, into dry patches that I didn't know existed. It just isn't cute super up close. And while it looks fine from the normal distance, People are gonna stare at you. Just a lot of other foundations where you look good up close and <laughs> further away. I just feel like this needs to be reformulated because it is a unique texture, it's a unique consistency, it's a unique formula on the market in my opinion, but it's just they didn't master it. So if we can get it mastered to where it looks good from all angles and all distances, I think I would really like this. So hopefully we can get that figured out, right? Because 
a lot of potential here. Next up, I have a concealer that I did not end up loving. That is the KVD Good Apple Concealer. Yeah, it just doesn't look pretty as it wears. When I first get it down, I think it looks really beautiful, but it ends up just looking a little bit too thick and crepey underneath my eyes. I don't know. I just, it looks really heavy on, under my eyes. I have other concealers that I prefer. This is a little finicky with the powders that I use. It doesn't accept all powders. So yeah, I was disappointed because I actually did really love the foundation version of this, but nothing about this really reminds me of the foundation formula wise. It just feels like a random overly hydrating concealer that ends up breaking up and not looking good. And I've heard a number of you actually who said you had mature skin say that you love it but I've also had a lot of people saying that they didn't like it so it seems to be a really mixed bag here but yeah I was on the end that I don't like it so I personally don't recommend it okay let's move on to the eyeballs I was on the fence of mentioning these in this video because it's not that I don't like these. It's just that I think you need to make a mindful purchase, do your research, and know what you are purchasing. So these are the new Tom Ford formula, the Eye Color Quad Creams. And the reason why I want you to be so thoughtful about this is because these are $89 palettes. So there are two shades that I personally own. The first one is the one that's currently on my eyes. This is Tiger Eye. Really pretty neutral shades. This is the one that I got on my eyes. Very, very pretty. And then I have Rose Topaz. I know a lot of you guys were eyeing these. This is a new formula from Tom Ford. It's really creamy. It's like a cream to powder kind of situation here. Not super creamy, but it's a hybrid. That's a good way of putting it. It's a hybrid cream powder. And I like her, but I don't know that it's worth the price. So this is definitely going to be for a specific customer. It doesn't really cause any fallout. It's super easy to apply. But as you can see, it is quite subtle and we have a lot of shimmer going on on the lid because there's not a single matte shade. If you're looking for quick makeup for work, you're going to like these. They don't give you too much color or anything. If you like the elegant, sophisticated kind of satin finish that Tom Ford is going to give you, then again, I think you're going to like this. If you like really precise looks, you like to see where the different colors are placed, you like each color to stand out on its own, you're not going to like this. If you like pigment, you're not going to like this. If you like extravagant makeup with glimmers, texture, all of that, you're not going to like this. So just be aware that it's for a very specific customer. If you're liking the description that I'm giving you, then I think you will like these and these would be a good pickup for the event. If you like the stuff that I said you shouldn't like if you like this, then also stay away. So just be careful. It's an $89 purchase. I want you to be mindful. And this is not a new product, but I did see it was new on the Sephora website. So I thought I'd throw this in. This is the Danessa Myricks. I don't know what these are, like the multi-chrome flakes. I, I can only speak on the one color that I have. I heard sometimes the colors may work different, but at least don't buy Moonlight here. This is not a pretty glimmer in my opinion at all. It, it applies very uneven. You definitely need to have a base underneath, but the problem that I have with this is the consistency of it is almost like a gel. So even if I put a colored base underneath, it breaks it up and causes it to crease. So it doesn't end up looking good anyways. So I don't like this as a lid topper. I don't like it on its own. It makes my eyelid feel sticky. It takes a long time for these to dry down. You literally have to take a fan to your eyes with your eyes closed in order for you to be able to open your eyes and not mess up the makeup. It's just real finicky and I don't like it. I don't like the way that it looks, so buyer beware. I talked about this in my haul and this is the one product that I've decided after one wear. I don't really like this. This is the Melt Cosmetics Slick Waterline Eye Pencil. The word slick on there is key because it is really, really slick to the point where I lose control with this and my eyeliner is a mess. So you'll see, even when I just put it on my waterline, I got it kind of clumped up here because it deposits so much color at once, I can't control it. It is too much of a good thing. It really, really is. I uh, put it on a brush and then I ran it along my upper lash line because yesterday when I tried it, I put it along my upper lash line and it was just a hot mess express. No control with this. Uh, the only reason I would recommend this is if you simply are just going to use it in your waterline because I do think it lasts a decent amount of time. But even then, I had trouble controlling it in my waterline and I just don't think it's worth the trouble really and also my under eyes like it did not wear well yesterday either in terms of I had so much darkness right here by the end of the day it definitely transferred so 
Yeah, this is definitely like the only product that I tried in my haul from the first try that I 100% know I don't I don't like this. So I popped it in this video. There's like a few other products that I tried from my haul that I'm like on the fence about. Like the Huda Beauty, while I like it, I don't love it. But I want to use it some more before I can truly say that. The Dior concealer I'm messing around with. So there's a couple things that it cosmetics CC. Like those I am not sure about, but I'm watching. But this is the only one where I'm like, no, I, I don't like you. <laughs> okay, the final category that I have to share with you is lips. So the first one is a specific lipstick color. Because I can't speak for the whole line. This is the only color that I have. But beware of the ABH lipstick in the shade Haze. I love always buying the lightest lipstick. This is super duper light. I I would recommend this only if you're going to put it like right here right in the center but it's not comfortable it feels drying and it gives you a butthole lip and part of that has to do with I bought the lightest lightest shade and their lightest shade is truly extremely light so that also is buyer error but if this is a representation of the rest of the lipsticks in the line then I wouldn't recommend any lipstick from the line. Though, you guys have confirmed with me. I've had a few of you tell me that you thought the lipsticks were beautiful, which is why I am only speaking of this shade in particular. Then, okay, it's not the lipsticks. I like the lipsticks. This is the Fenty Beauty lipstick case. <laughs> I actually do enjoy the lipsticks individually. So the lipsticks are gonna come like this. You know, very unfinished packaging, very cheap looking. And then you don't need to, but there's a case that you can buy. And, oh, here's how you open it. You twist it and you pop the lipstick in here and here's the lipstick. So it's interchangeable. It's supposed to be environmentally friendly. You can argue that, but honestly, it's very expensive. It's $12, and I think the lipstick is 18 making the whole lipstick and the component $30. That is so expensive. That is robbery. The Fenty Bullet Lipstick before this was $18 with the case. Now this is what you get for $18. The lipstick price didn't even go down, so I can't respect it as an environmental move if um, they're charging you $30 for it when their last lipstick was $18 and it had a case. But anyways, <laughs> I like the lip gloss formula. I just think the case is overpriced for what it is. The lipstick works without the case. Yes, the lipstick case is very luxurious, but I don't think you need it, and that's that. <laughs> okay, the last product that I have in today's video, I actually had it in like my favorites, I loved it, but I've come to the conclusions, I don't recommend you buy it. <laughs> this is the uh, Natasha Denona I Need a Rose Lip Gloss. There were three shades. It was a collection of three lip liners, three lipsticks, and three lip glosses all corresponding, so there were three different shades within the whole line. I just don't like Natasha Denona's lip gloss formula. I liked this with the system. I liked it with the lip liner, the lipstick, and then the lip gloss to finish it, but if you're gonna buy the lip gloss individually, don't even waste your money. There there are so many better lip gloss formulations on the market that I'd recommend you spend your money on. This is really truly subpar. She needs to reformulate these. They disappear in like three seconds, I swear. They don't give off too much pigment, which is fine if they don't give us too much pigment, but they need to last. This does not last. There's not a special thing about this formula at all, so save your money. It's not, like I said, it's not that it's bad, it's just I'm comparing it to all of the other lip glosses at Sephora that are available to you, and that just, that, that ain't it. That's not ever one that I would say you should buy. <laughs> all right, guys, there we have it. Those were the newer products from Sephora that I don't recommend. Even though, obviously, I'm a consumer channel, I'm constantly testing products, constantly pushing out recommendations to you guys. As always, I want you to be responsible with your money, make responsible decisions, make thoughtful purchases. That's why I do what I do to help you out. I love doing these roundups here to help you out and make you think about your purchases. And if you're watching this, clearly you're doing the research. So I hope that this was some, some way helpful to you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.